in the, the section Carthage is in, and uh, I like what I feel, what I see in Mississippi. It's uh, good to be here this morning. Now, uh, appreciate the district board bringing me here. I want to be a blessing to you. I didn't come here uh, just to rest up in the Ramada Inn and and eat good things and fellowship. But I, I want I want to be a, a blessing to you. I want to help you and help myself. I will probably I don't know whether I'll be teaching or preaching. Uh, it's difficult for me to separate the two. So I'll probably be preaching a little this morning. And uh, we've asked Brother Ellard to read for us. And one man said that preacher can't read. Has to have someone read for him. Well, I'm going to read my text so that you'll know how I can read. And uh, I want to say some things. Uh, I'll probably follow the same theme all week long probably read my text every morning and repeat some things every morning I told brother I told brother uh, Travis last night that uh, I was just going to get up this morning that brother Stone King had preached everything last night there was to preach so I'm just going to get up and sing Mary Had a Little Lamb and read the 23rd Psalm and sit down. But I picked up a few things during the night. So we'll endeavor this morning to bring you what God has laid on our heart. Acts chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3 for our scripture reading this morning. And I'll... My little girl always fusses at me if I don't give her a title, so I'll uh, attempt to give a title this morning. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers, Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Reading now from Revelation chapter 3, very familiar, verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, will sup with him, and he with me. You may be seated this morning. Now, if I would have a title or a textual application this morning, it would be somewhere between apostolic power and Laodicea. I feel that every one of us here this morning, every church, every district, every individual, 
in this wonderful organization is somewhere between Laodicea and apostolic power. That apostolic church was born into the world with power and anointing. They were born in a prayer meeting, came out of that upper room with the power and the presence of God with them. And I wondered how in just 65 years they could deteriorate to a cold, lifeless, lukewarm church with God on the outside knocking at the door. So I wrestled with this for a while. And I'll probably follow along these lines every morning somewhat uh, with a little deviation here and there. Now, I, I want to say some things to start with. I told Brother Sheck Snyder uh, before I walked up here, uh, I'm probably going to preach some things that you don't like and things that you don't believe here at this camp meeting. And uh, I, I want to clear the air. Uh, I think in times past, uh, some of us have preached some things in the wrong spirit, in the wrong attitude. And because people did not immediately line up to what we were preaching, they got a bad attitude. Now, I am going to love you when I, I love you now. I'm going to love you when I leave here. I'll hug your neck if you're a man, buy you a cup of coffee, buy you a T-bone steak if you're hungry. I'll fellowship you. If I happen to preach against television and someone walks up to me and said, Preacher, uh, i got my television set. I'm going to watch my television set. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'll say, Fine, man. I love you. Uh, I'll hug your neck. We'll go drink coffee. But that don't mean I'm not going to preach against television. Now, I want you to understand that this morning. I'm not going to get a bad attitude toward you, and if you get a bad attitude toward me, that's your fault. I mean, that's your problem. Praise God. Now, I say some things, a lot of times I go somewhere to preach, and they're they looking at me like, I wonder if he can preach. At the same time, I'm wondering how much preaching they can stand. Praise God. And uh, you're wondering this morning if you're going to like me. No, you're not going to like me. I'll just tell you that right now. You're either going to love me or hate me. And there is no in-between. And uh, whichever you do, that's your problem. Now, Brother Travis uh, gave me my liberty this morning. Two or three told me to take my liberty, and I intend to do it. And uh, if I, you start stoning me, I'm going to get behind two or three of these big men up here. Uh, get down behind this pulpit. I'm going to keep right on preaching. Praise God. Now, uh, we, we've cleared the air, so I'm going to start out. We have the apostolic doctrine this morning. I want to repeat that. We have the apostolic doctrine. But I have never seen a church that had apostolic power. I have seen some that I have labeled the Laodicea. That might be just my opinion, but as far as I am concerned, uh, they are Laodicea. I have written Ichabod above the door and walked away from them because they had the attributes of uh, Laodicea. But I have never in my life, and I've been in this 34 years, never in my life have I seen a church that had apostolic power and had all of the attributes of an apostolic church. I wish that I could come to you this morning and say that I pastor an apostolic church. Feel good about. There are some things I don't feel good about. I count not myself to have apprehended, like Paul said, but forgetting those things that are behind, I reach for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Praise God. God has blessed me immeasurably in the city that I live in. We went there 17 years ago with three members, and God has uh, blessed us. I'm not going to talk about numbers and buildings this morning. That turns me off. I don't like to hear that. I think that's ego tripping. 
But I have found out one thing that God will bless an ignorant old ninth grade dropout that drove a truck for 23 years. God can take nothing and make something out of it if you will yield yourself to the will and the presence of God and listen for the voice of God. Now, our problem is one of this. I'm going to get on this. Uh, uh, some of our problem is this. And uh, uh, when I was a boy on the farm growing up, uh, I had a few simple little chores to do. Uh, they were simple, uh, simple little things that uh, every child needs to, uh, or a young person needs to learn. Uh, my, my little chores. And uh, being uh, like all young people, I, uh, I'd haphazardly slip through them and leave half of them undone. And, and, and I was in such a hurry to get out there and play. Well, knowing full well that my mother uh, would check me out and stand on the porch and, and call my name, I would get far enough from the house so that when Mama called my name, I could not hear her. And uh, then when supper time came, all boys are going to go home at supper time. And uh, so uh, at supper time, I would go home and Mama would say, uh, I, didn't you hear me? I'd say, no, Mama, I, I didn't hear you. Well, uh, it seemed that that never did keep the razor strap and the hairbrush and the, the hickory switch off uh, the backside of my lap. Uh, so uh, we're like that this morning. We're afraid that if we get too close to the house of God, we're going to hear from God. And some of us really don't want to hear what God has to say. Because it might disrupt our little velvet line rut that we fit so comfortably in this morning. But I want you to know that I am reaching for apostolic power. I want a return to that apostolic church. I, I want to, uh, my, uh, when, when Peter and John went up to the temple to pray, uh, they weren't going up there for some coffee clatch. They weren't going up there uh, to play checkers. They were going up at the hour of prayer. And we don't have apostolic prayer in our ranks. They prayed till the place was shaken. We we do not have the apostolic signs and wonders in our midst. And I might talk a little bit about that later on. We've had a few wonderful healings in our uh, assembly. Uh, probably a, a six or eight healed of cancer. Uh, some just lately uh, on a Sunday morning, a woman healed of cancer. Uh, I had a woman come back uh, from the dead. I may talk about that a little later on uh, this week uh, when I get to talking about uh, apostolic faith. But uh, we do have the apostolic doctrine. It is an indisputable, irrefutable fact. We have the apostolic doctrine. We preach what Peter preached. We preach what Paul preached. We can stand this morning and defend repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I'm a little worried about uh, uh, some of uh, the things that I hear lately. I want to say one thing more before I go any farther. I am United Pentecostal from uh, the bald spot on the top of my head uh, to these manila shoes that I am wearing this morning. I am United Pentecostal. I love the leadership of this organization. I love Brother Urshan. I love Brother Becton. Brother Becton preached uh, in my church a couple of Sundays ago. Brother Urshan comes and preaches. And I, I love those men. I have no criticism of the leadership of this church. I have no criticism of the leadership of this organization. I do not. Uh, someone asked me, said, is it going to split? And I said, no. And then I happened to think about what I'd said. And I said, yeah, this organization is going to split. When the trumpet sounds, it's going to split. Because there are some things in our ranks that are not going up. Praise God. And I'm like that fellow that the tares and the wheat grow together. And they said, let's go root up the tares. Now, that's been my problem. I want to go root up the tares. But Jesus said, you let them grow together. I know who the wheat is, and I know who the tares are. 
praise God, that I, I may preach before I get out of here with the real United Pentecostal Church. Please stand up. We've got so many winds of doctrine and so many things are blowing through our ranks today. Uh, I, 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 I'm amazed. Uh, Sister Westbrook and I flew to, uh, out to, to uh, uh, Anaheim uh, uh, several years ago. Uh, I believe I preached at San Bernardino. And uh, we flew into uh, uh, Los Angeles area. And uh, Sister Westbrook is born in East Texas. She never traveled very much. And when she saw that, that yellow cloud hovering over that city, she said, look, she said, there's a cloud. I said, honey, I said, there's no rain in that cloud. I said, that is smog. And uh, talking to Brother Howard Davis, he said, there are times when that smog comes down in the city of Los Angeles. And it gets to the place where it's just choking you to death. Your eyes water and your nose runs and you have difficulty in your breathing. But it came in so slow and so subtle from those thousands of uh, exhaust, uh, automobile exhaust. Uh, unnoticeably it crept in until it is almost choking you to death. We have had some things creep into our ranks that are almost choking us to death. But Brother Davis said there is a time when the wind changes and the fresh breeze will blow all of that smog out to sea. And I feel encouraged in my heart. I hear some of the reports that uh, are coming around the country. And this early morning prayer meeting of conquest, uh, I'm trying to believe God that the winds of God are going to blow through our ranks and blow a lot of the smog and the things that are choking us to death. And we'll be able to breathe freely again uh, the fresh air uh, 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 of the doctrine of God. Praise God. We have the apostolic doctrine. We have preached repentance. I don't hear enough preaching of repentance anymore. Give me Matthew 3, uh, uh, 3 and 1, uh, Brother Ellard. Uh, I, I don't hear enough uh, uh, preaching of repentance. Now, repentance is part of the apostolic doctrine. I'm going to dwell a little while on that apostolic doctrine this morning because we dare not deviate from this apostolic doctrine if we're going to be a full-fledged apostolic church. Read, Brother Ellard. In those days came John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Preaching in the wilderness of Judea. in the wilderness of Judea. And saying. And saying. Repent ye. Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you know the Pharisees came out uh, uh, to question John. And he looked up. And now, 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 now John was uh, uh, really not uh, a love preacher. He, uh, he looked up there uh, and he said, Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He said, Bring forth some fruits uh, that are meat from repentance. Uh, give me Luke chapter 13 and verse 3, Brother Ellard, uh, this morning. Repentance is a doctrine that we need to keep preaching. You can get someone filled with the Holy Ghost, question mark. But if they do not have a genuine uh, uh, experience of repentance, their spirit baptism is not going to stay with them very long because the Spirit of God will not dwell in an unclean temple. You've got to clean that temple up if you want the presence of God to continually dwell in it. And John the Baptist came preaching repentance. Read, Brother Ellard. I tell you nay. Jesus said, I tell you nay. But except you repent. Except you repent. You shall all likewise perish. You're all going to likewise perish. Praise God. We need to hear more preaching of repentance. Yes. A genuine experience of repentance. When you will turn around. I was sitting in the pit grill in New Orleans one time. You can always tell a Yankee, he says, New Orleans. And you can always tell a Southerner, they say New Orleans. And the French say New Orleans. But I was sitting in the pit grill with a Jehovah's Witness in New Orleans one time. And uh, he said, what is repentance? 
I said repentance simply means quit your ugly, rotten sinners. Turn your back on the world. It has a Greek application this morning. Now, I pastor in a military city, and uh, repentance really means about face. Or to the rear of march. It means to turn your life around. Turn your thinking around. Turn your back on the world and turn your face toward God. We need to hear more preaching of repentance. That's it. Amen. I hear a lot of this, come get the Holy Ghost. And I like to see them come get the Holy Ghost. And I like what I heard last night. Lord, I like what I heard last night. We need to move into a higher dimension. I've been preaching that at home. I've been preaching on this at home. Move into an apostolic, back to an apostolic church. Back to apostolic power. Move up into a new dimension. But we dare not leave the, 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 the foundation of the apostles' doctrine behind us when we move up into that higher dimension. We better not lay anything down as we move upward. I'm a little troubled this morning about laying some of those things down. Um, my textual application, Brother Travis, this morning is from apostolic power to Laodicea. We are somewhere between apostolic power and Laodicea. Every church, every man, this organization, every individual is somewhere between apostolic power and Laodicea. And I I wondered how they got from apostolic power to Laodicea. It came to me that the spirits that Peter and Paul and James and John and Jude fought when they penned the letters to the churches, those are the spirits that led them from apostolic power down to Laodicea. Laodicea was the end result of a drifting church that could not, could not conform to the apostolic preaching of Paul and Peter and James and John. You know, Israel could never equate the voice of Jeremiah to the voice of God. I can see... I can see the unsaved husband sitting at home watching the cockroaches and the canaries battling it out on the tube. And uh, who cares? I I might get into that later on. I'll offend some of you. Brother Travis, pull my coattail. You're my pastor this week. And uh, if I mess it up, straighten it up when I'm gone. I, I, I won't feel bad at you. Uh, I won't. You, 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 you're going to... I don't know what you'd have to do to get this old boy. Uh, I, I'm a kind, benevolent old man, Brother Travis. And uh, i got a young boy in my church who wants to write a story of my life. I've been a cowboy and a truck driver and a sailor. And I've been trying to preach for 20 years. He said, I, I, want, to write, I want to write a story of your life. I said, well, that's easy. I said, I've I just been a kind, good-natured, happy old fella going down through life. But trouble has plagued me all my life. When I was in the world, Brother Travis, it seemed like some dude was always jumping on me. Getting me up in a corner and jumping on me. And when I came to God, you know, I, I love everybody. I, I'm not mad at anyone. I, I, I wish to God we, we, we all preach the same thing. I, you're not going to hurt me. You're not going to get me uptight. But it seemed like since I came to God, everybody's pushing me up in the corner. Well, you get a rat in the corner and he'll fight and that's the story of my life. They just pushed me up in a corner. 
praise God, and trouble has plagued me all the days of my life. Apostolic power. I, I want it. Now, old preachers never die. They just lose their text and wonder. But as long as I come back and pick it up, I'm not an old preacher. Praise God. Now, what made them drift? I, I, I'm going to tell you one of our problems this morning of Laodicea. They said, I am rich. And I have need of nothing. Probably just built a million dollar sanctuary. Of course, God was on the outside knocking on the door trying to get in. And there it is the mercy and the long suffering of God exemplified. All Laodicea had to do was open the door and let him in. The mercy and the long suffering of God. All Laodicea had to do was open the door and let him in. Praise God. Now, we dare not leave our apostolic foundational doctrine of repentance and water baptism. Uh, John the Baptist preached repentance. Jesus preached repentance. When Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, the first thing he said was, Repent! And later on, Peter in 2 Peter 3 and 9, he said, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In other words, it's repent or hell. I don't care how often or how long you talk in tongues. It's repent or hell. Repent or perish. My God, I'm reaching for the gifts of the Spirit. I want so desperately to see the gifts of the Spirit operating freely. Uh, one of our problems is we are so bound. I, uh, I have a church that God has blessed me with, God's church, I should say, that uh, are uh, sort of uh, loose in their expression. Ask Brother Burgess, he's been there. And uh, you say, that's the black folks. No, I had it before the black folks come. Long time I've been there about I've been there about a week or two and I had to run everybody off the platform and have somebody to preach to on Sunday night. About six of them sitting out there, broken down barracks building. The song leader get up, he'd sing. Oh, we we'll understand it better by and by. I should speed them songs up. Speed them songs up. Speed them songs up. And he kept on. And one night I come off of that platform, I couldn't take it any longer. And I got down front between him and the congregation, what there was, if you could call it a congregation. And I started singing, I don't sing well, but I can sing loud. And I started singing loud and fast. And the red come up to his hair. I took that song service away from him, and I, I took it all I could take it. I, I went to shouting and, and uh, praising God. Yeah. I was born in the fire, and I can't live in the smoke of yesterday's experience. Hey. My Lord have mercy. Now, uh, I must be getting old. A genuine case of repentance. Uh, uh, we're, we're so bound. See, I, I come back and pick it up. We're so bound. and I, I start my services off. I, I, I just jump up and, 
and, and start singing a chorus, and everybody starts singing a chorus. That's the way we start out. And uh, oh, do you allow the man to cut the tape off around here? He cut that tape off. I'd say some things. Cut that tape off. I don't dare say it. Not with a tape on. Cut the tape off. Praise God. Hey, I've got two of them. You listen to this now. I've got two of them. I got to preaching one morning. Oh, the Sunday morning. I got to preaching on anointed but not blessed. I got that uh, title from J.T. Pugh. Anointed but not blessed. You know, God anoints you with the Holy Ghost, but you're not uh, enjoying the blessings of God. And I called, uh, I, I got a drummer. He, uh, I said, drummer, come up here and stand. And he come up like a shot and walked up. I said, turn around. He flipped around and looked, standing straight. I said, J.W., come here. Stand there. I said, now, I want to tell you something. These two are paying their tithes and $200 a month pledge above their tithes and carrying a PIM missionary for $20 a month. And when a blasted house that the city evicted them and bulldozed it down. And that one was a rock drummer. They had nothing when they came to God. J.W. has got a new house, a new car, an older car, a wife, two children, beautiful people. The drummer's preaching now. He can preach like a house of fire. They're calling him all over the district preaching. He don't have a license yet, but he's preaching. He don't, want, he don't need a license. Praise God. I said, now, I said, J.W., go stand over there. Put your face in the corner. He walked over stuck his face in the corner. I said, Edwin, go put your face in the corner. He walked over there, stuck his face in the corner. I said, see, there's a bunch of you wouldn't do that. Praise God. There is a freedom of what... I had a lady... Walked into my assembly one time. All she lacked was the glasses on the stick. She, sophistication uh, and, and social position written all over her. Uh, all she lacked it was a mink coat and the glasses on a stick. You know, that's all she lacked. And she come in there and sit down, and that thing blasted off. And they went running the aisles, and her eyes come out about that far, and her head begin to swivel. And on a Saturday, uh, my wife and I, we got time. We take all uh, of the first-time addresses and get out and work the street. And I, I walked up and knocked on her door, and I knew who it was. And I, I, my, my stock remark is, I'm Pastor so-and-so. You visited our church. We'd like to come out and make you welcome, let you feel a warm welcome. And then I usually say, and how did you like the service? And when I said, how do you like the service, I braced myself. I could just hear she said, oh, she said, it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. She said, they were so, 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 I said, uninhibited. She said, that's the word, uninhibited. Praise God. Now, we need to come out of our shell and get a little uninhibited. But there's no telling what God would do for us if we'd forget who we are. Hey, that traditional Pentecostalism is drilled into us. The old boy that prayed us through and God bless his heart. He, he was a wonderful old man. He, he was a great fella. God bless him. He went to his eternal reward. But he preached repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name. And the infilling of the Holy Ghost so strong with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. He preached it so strong that we get to thinking now, we've got it. And we're going to sit down and fold our hands till the rapture comes. We're going to occupy till it comes. I told my song leader, if you ever sing that song, hold the fort for I'm coming, I'll fire you. 
hold the fort for us. We ain't going to hold that fort. We're going to go out and attack the gates of hell. Praise God. God is standing in the shadows wanting to lift us into a higher dimension. We've got a world to reach and a short time to do it in. And we are somewhere between Laodicea and apostolic power this morning. We need to examine ourselves and find out where we are. Hard for us to look at ourselves, Brother Ellen. Now we can look at everybody else and analyze them and critique them. But when we come to ourselves, my God, don't let me run over time now. Wife, wave your hand. Somebody hit the piano. They turn you off when your time's up anyhow. You might as well quit. Everybody turns you off. They say, finally quit. Finally quit. Wave your hand, wife, when it's time. Praise God. Now, we, we, we've had that drilled into us. That we need to... We, 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 we've got to do it. Hebrews, Hebrews 6 and 1, Brother Ellen. And you, you listen to this now. You listen to it. Uh, Brother Munch, he said, clip this on your brain. Clip it on your brain. Tattoo it down in your gizzard somewhere. Because we're going to need it. We're going to need it. Read, Brother Ellen. Therefore, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Leaving Christ. the principles of the doctrine. And some are preaching now. We need to leave the principles of the doctrine. Let us go on into perfection. Go on into perfection. Not laying again. Not laying again. The foundation of repentance. The foundation of repentance. From dead works. From dead works. And of faith toward God. And faith toward God. Read on. That's where, that's their problem. That's where they stop. Of the doctrine of baptism. Of the doctrine of baptism. And of the laying on of hands. the laying on of hands. And of the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead. And of the eternal judgment. And of the eternal judgment. Now we believe all those things. Now read. And this we will do. And this we will do. If God permits. Don't you let go of those things. Right. Let's move into a higher dimension, but let's keep what we've got. That's right. And don't let go of these things. Read, Brother Ellen. For it is impossible. For now you hear this. Here's what happens to those that lay aside those doctrinal foundations of repentance and water baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost and a holiness walk with God. I may get into that sometime this week if Brother Travis will let me. And you're not going to like what I say, some of you. You're not going to like what I say. Read, Brother Allen. For it is impossible. It is impossible. For those who were once enlightened. You have once had this doctrine instilled in you. Read on. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. And you have tasted of the good Holy Ghost. Read. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Partakers of the Holy Ghost. And have tasted the good word of God. Tasted the good word of God. And the powers of the world to come. And the powers of the world to come. If they should turn away. If you turn away from the fundamental doctrine. To renew them again. We're preaching about the fundamental doctrine. If you turn away from that fundamental doctrine. It is impossible. Read. But they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves Praise the Son of God. God. When you turn away from that apostolic doctrine, you have crucified God anew. Saying, we don't need this anymore. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11 and 3, straying from the simplicity of the gospel 
This gospel got down in this old hard-headed truck driver's heart. You know, I lived... I sat in the same church 14 years. God had to whoop me and nearly kill me to get me out of the ministry. I used to run Jackson to Houston. And I used to stay down here in this old Terry Moore motel. I'd run to Jackson, go to the motel, and the ladder man bring my Houston load out of Atlanta. He'd bring my load in. He'd go to bed. I'd take his load and go back home to Houston. Three rounds a week. It used to be 450 miles. You pull that three rounds a week, every week. You know, you you kiss your wife coming and going, especially if she's working. Praise God. Read. Read. And uh, they they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh. You are crucifying the Lord Jesus afresh. And put him to I'll an open shame. I'll come back pick it up now. In 2 Corinthians 11 and 3, Paul said, The simplicity of the gospel. I got a bad sign of strain. He started in last week. The devil's been fighting me. I'm all choked up, sick. I'm going to preach in I woke up in the middle of the night. I said, I rebuke you, devil. Get behind me. If I kill myself, I'm going to do it. Read 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I fear, I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, as through, the serpent beguiled Eve, through his subtlety, with his subtlety, so your minds, your minds, should be corrupted, corrupted, by the simplicity, from the simplicity, that is in Christ, that is in Christ. For, for if he, if he that comes, and they are coming out of every corner, they're crawling off and underneath the rug. They're slipping in. I got the charismatics in my city baptizing in Jesus' name. You know, there's two things you have to do if you're apostolic. I told him last night. Number one, if you're they, they, the enemies of the apostolic church have this indictment against them. Now, don't pay any attention to what your friends say. They'll tell you you preach good whether you did or not. Ask your wife on the way home. She'll tell you the truth. Don't pay any attention to what your friends say. They'll flatter you. But if your enemies say something, you can believe it. And the enemies of the apostolic church said this. They that have turned the world upside down have come here. with their doctrine. Now we have done that. You walk into my city and you ask anybody there if he's been there two weeks, say, where is Faith Tabernacle? And he'll tell you. He might grit his teeth when he tells you. But he'll tell you where it is. Praise God. I've had to tell my folks they get fired the second day for witnessing. I, I had to make a rule, say, don't preach for 30 days. You get a new job, don't preach for 30 days. Keep your mouth shut. Don't witness for 30 days. And I've had them come in my office and say, oh, Brother Westford, forgive me. I just couldn't hold it. Forgive me. Praise God. If we could get that apostolic fire and that apostolic burden. Oh, it, it amazes me how we can walk amongst the lost and hell-bound folks all around us. We, we was witnessing in the, in the motel. Marjorie, she, she, she don't know an enemy in the world. And the cook came out to see Marjorie and talk with her. And, and we got to witnessing to her. And she said, oh, she said, is that that church on Robinson Street? And I, I didn't know, I didn't know it was on Robinson Street. I hadn't looked it up yet on the map. Praise God. They knew about the church on Robinson Street. Praise God. 
Everybody in our city ought to know where we are and what we're preaching. We need to come out of our corner. Hey, the world is hungry for this. It's the only thing that will satisfy the world. Lord, I don't dare. I'd have to have you cut the tape off again. And I, I don't want to do that. Time, time is getting too short to cut the tape off. Now, one thing that brought Laodicea was affluency. They said, we're rich. I got a brand new parking lot out of six inches of reinforced concrete. 325 parking spaces. And the man walked down. He said, what's that parking lot made of? I said, well, I said, now, it looks like concrete, but it's really made out of peanut brittle. It looks like concrete, but really it's made out of peanut brittle. And I walked out there on my new parking lot one day, and I saw them oil drips from them old ragged automobiles. Brand new, shining, concrete parking lot. I want to growl about them old cars. Them old cars are leaking that oil. You know, about ten minutes I got under conviction. I got under conviction. Now I live in a low income area. I prayed them folks through. They didn't even know how to brush their teeth, comb their hair, much less go to work. And they'd go, they'd go to work and get married and start paying the tithes and living for God and become an asset to the community. And I thought about how the old ragged cars, they prayed, Oh, God, help this car to get me to work and to church. And they was riding on prayer. And I got to thinking about them old cars and leaking that oil and them hard working saints driving them old ragged cars to church and are paying their tithes. And I got to repent and I said, My God, I, I don't care if the whole parking lot looks like an oil puddle. And pretty soon I began to thank God for them oil drips. Them old ragged cars are bringing them to church. Those old ragged cars are carrying them to work. But I've noticed some things in the last few years. They come out of drugs, heroin, mainliners, cocaine sniffers, ex-convicts, streetwalkers, some of them. Some of them got degrees. Some of them are socially acceptable in the community. I've never seen anything like what the Holy Ghost will do. And going to work, getting married. And I, I, I notice good jobs and I start noticing them good cars. And I had somebody, I said, Oh, you got brand new cars, stand up. Boy, a, I said, my God, I believe God's trying to talk to me. I said, mine's four years old. I, I believe God's trying to talk to me. All you getting them new cars around here. And I, I, I watch them moving into homes. Some of them living in homes better than mine. But I've noticed there's been a little cool. When I preach this at home, the other night, they started raising their pledges and doubling their pledges. I said, I noticed the new car. You don't have to pray to get to church and to work anymore. You got a good car that'll take you seven states away on a three day weekend. Memorial Day. My attendance dropped a hundred. Bam! I said, now, God answered your prayer, give you a new car. Instead of giving God more, using your new car to glorify God. 
you're spending money running all over the country on a three-day weekend. said, what's that scripture, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God? Paul was fighting that spirit. The more God blesses us, instead of giving more to the kingdom of God and put more in the church and the kingdom of God, we're buying new cars and better houses. Don't get their clothes at Sally's Boutique anymore. You know what Sally's Boutique is? Salvation Army. That's Sally's Boutique. Praise God. They're buying floor shine shoes and Kuppenheimer suits and new cars and nice houses. But they're fervent spirit toward God. I'm a-preaching to you this morning. Their fervency in the spirit for the things of God has cooled. And it's a leading us to Laodicea just as sure as I'm standing in this platform this morning. From apostolic power to Laodicea Now, we want revival. I'm going to preach on apostolic revival and apostolic faith and apostolic prayer. I'm going to search out the things by the help of God this week that's going to lead us back to that apostolic power. But one of them this morning is a change of direction. We have been so blessed. My city, when I bought a Cadillac back in 1984, people went all over my city telling my folks, you give your money to that preacher, him riding in a Cadillac. You know, small towns different than Jackson. I had my front yard landscaped and it started a riot in my city nearly. The preacher spent money to landscape his front yard. And I dare not live in a prestigious looking home in my city. We uh, took our old three bedroom home and went back in the backyard and built on what we needed. And that means there's less lawn to mow too. Hallelujah. And we built what we needed back there. We don't live in a prestigious looking house. I'm driving an old 84 Fleetwood. It's in the shop right now. It's the reason I didn't bring it down here. We need to change our thought and our direction if we're going to move back into apostolic, apostolic power. Praise God. There are things we're going to struggle with. One of them is that love of pleasure. Paul was fighting that love of pleasure. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. You can see that. And the peer pressure that's in the world comes to our churches. Let me, let me tell you where our styles are coming from. And I, uh, I, I might get on that after a while. We're, we're living in a world of television robots. The folks out there are television robots. They are completely controlled by television. They are mechanical robots controlled by television. What the TV says, they do. Somebody wears it, they wear it. Somebody puts a white glove on their left hand, they do it. Now, we don't watch television. I hope. I hope. I hope. I got a right to preach against television. I drove a truck 17 years for one company. 
and slept three times a week in a motel. And before God, I never turned a set of tele- a television set on. I've got a right to preach against it. I carry my little radio with me. I don't want to turn that one that's on, on that television set. I don't want to turn that radio on. I don't want to touch it. I hate it that bad. Now, we don't watch it. Do, do, do we? Uh, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to make you raise your hand. But I get to preaching hard at home. I say, how many of you still love me? I say, how many of you don't? Ah, there's some hypocrites here. Praise God. Now, the peer pressure of those that watch television is what we feel. The peer pressure of those robots that are controlled are bringing pressure against the church. This taking off on a three-day weekend. They go to work. Everybody talking about three-day weekend coming up. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going here. I'm going there. I'm going to the lake. I'm going to see Grandma. I'm going. They say, where are you going? Well, I'm going to church. Church. And they begin to feel that pressure to take off. What time is it? Can't see without the glass. About ten minutes. The spirits that are in the world are working against the church. Hem lines go up and down like a window shade in the world. Well, well, careful now, Westburn. Watch it. Careful now. Praise God. I'll get on them men's sports before I get on you ladies' clothes. Want me to get on sports? Every nation that has gone down the drain from the Greek and the Roman empires on down have had a love of two things that exemplified their downfall. One of them is sexual perversion, and the other one is sports. Sports is not only the national religion of the United States of America, it is the national religion of the entire world. And if it is a religion, it is idolatry. So how deep do you want to get involved in idolatry? Our manual says, worldly sports, please tell me the ones that are godly. Please point out to me the ones that are godly. Someone said to me one time, said, Brother Westberg, you're hunting and you're fishing. And I've fished six times in 17 years with an 18-mile long lake three miles from my house. Now, I do hunt a few birds and a little deer once in a while. And I said, don't compare sports to hunting and fishing. Jesus said, Peter, cast your net on the other side of the ship. And 
Jesus said to Peter, Rise, Peter, slay and eat. But I ain't never heard where Jesus said, Peter, knock that ball up against the wall. How you like that? Peer pressure from the world. Styles. The things that the world is involved in is what has driven some of us almost to Laodicea. Examine yourself and see if you be in the faith. Oh, it's tough for to examine ourselves. When I was 18, I thought I was the handsomest, strongest individual in the entire world. I couldn't understand, Brother Travis, why all the girls didn't just fall out in a dead faint when I walked by. Now, I'm dating myself, but I used to think if I could get in the ring with Joe Lewis one time, they'd carry that brown bomber out in the third round. I'm dating myself now. I mean, I was the handsomest, strongest thing that ever walked. I was the best driver in the world. If you didn't believe me, just ask me. All them other fools, that fool nearly got me. Of course, I did run the stop sign. That fool nearly got me. Boy, I was the best driver and the handsomest, strongest thing. And then one day, an old boy about that tall just whooped the fire out of me. And I said, well, not the toughest and then one day, I took an honest look in the mirror. And I could understand why all of them girls wasn't falling out in the dead paint all them years. Now there's one lady that still thinks I'm handsome and don't nobody tell her anything different, please. Because she still thinks so. Hallelujah. And then one day, I'll never forget it in Beauregard Parish. In Beauregard. I walk black. I know it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Beauregard Parish. Rose Pine. Between Rose Pine and DeRitter. I was driving a Diamond T diesel and I rear-ended the deputy sheriff. And when you a Texas truck driver in Louisiana and you rear-end the deputy sheriff in Beauregard Parish, Friend, you lucky if you get out of that alive. And I finally decided I was not the best driver in the world. But it is difficult for us to analyze ourselves. James said we're like the man that beholds his face in a glass. And we turn and walk out of there and forget what manner of person we are. Now... By the help of God this week, I'm going to try to find out where I am. I am somewhere between Laodicea and apostolic power. I am somewhere. I'm going to try. And I, I'm going to examine all of the roads and all of the trails that will lead me back to apostolic power. Because I believe the coming of the Lord is upon us this morning. And I've got to have apostolic power. I want an apostolic revival. In closing, just one more scripture, Brother Ellard. I believe I've got about four minutes left. He's got, I've got five minutes left. One more scripture, Brother Ellard. Joel 2 and 28. Now, when Peter quoted this in Acts 2 and 14, he left out one word. He did not quote Joel 2 and 28 exactly as it is written in Acts 2 and 14. Joel 2 and 28, Brother Ellard. She will play. Are you like that, Sister Ruby? Praise God. She will play, Monsieur. Hallelujah. 
Joel. Forgive me. Been living with them Yankees 17 years. Praise God. Where's off on you? All right. Read Joel 2 and 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards. And it shall come to pass afterwards. Now, Peter did not quote that word afterwards. Because it was afterwards. But after what? And afterwards saith who? I will pour out my spirit upon upon all flesh. Who's saying that? Read. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Read on. And also upon the servants. And upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out of my Spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. But it'll be afterward. After what? Go back to verse 12 and tell me. After what? I'm going to pour out my Spirit on all flesh afterwards. Read. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, saith the Lord, turn you even to me with all your heart. After you turn to me with all of your heart, I'll pour out my Spirit. Read. And with fasting. And, and with when you start back to your fasting, I'll pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Read on. And with weeping. Weeping. And with mourning. Mourning. And rend your heart. Rend your heart. And not your, your garment. Not your garment. Read on. And turn unto the Lord your God. Turn unto the Lord your God. For He is gracious and he merciful. Is and gracious. Merciful. And what? And merciful. And merciful. Slow to anger. Slow to anger. And of great kindness. Great kindness. And repenteth Him of the evil. Brother Stone King got into this last night. Read who knoweth if he will return and repent? If you will return and repent. And leave a blessing behind him. Read. Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Read. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Assemble the elders. Gather the children. Gather the children. And those that suck the breath. Those that suck the breath. Let the bridegroom go forth. Let the bridegroom go forth. Of his chamber. Of his chamber. And the bride out of her closet. The bride out of her closet. Afterwards, read on. Let the priest. Let the priest. The ministers of the Lord. The ministers of the Lord. Weep. Weep. Between, between the, the porch and the altar. After all of that. After all of that. After all of that. We can have apostolic divine. Praise God. Somewhere between Laodicea and apostolic power. God bless you. Praise God, praise